All right, this video might be like 15 minutes long. I, I don't know, but basically what I'm doing is I'm walking you through all the troubleshooting that I went through. It took a couple days to get to a point where I made a successful prototype or a successful proof of concept. So, you know, I don't really care if you have a good attention span or not. What I'm doing is I'm trying to save you <laughs> all the time it took me to try and figure this out with trial and error. Um, so ultimately, you know, I'm going to show you videos of, you know, how to make this, how to attach it to an amp, how to put it into your guitar. Um, this particular configuration of a driver pickup didn't work at the end of the day. Uh, but the method that I used to build it applies to the configuration of driver pickup that did work. So I kept all that in the video. And, uh, yeah, it, it's all relevant and, uh, you know, kind of, kind of seeing this will hopefully make you fully understand what I did and why I did it. All right. A lot of videos out there that talk about how to build an infinite sustainer or a sustainiac, but none of them like tell you everything that you need to know, start to finish. So... There's a lot of videos out there that talk about taking a magnet out of a humbucking pickup and then taking one of the coils and taking the copper off of it and putting, a, you know, some windings close to the top of the pickup. And then it talks about like an Arduino or some kind of control board that no one gives any details about, you know, that's going to power this pickup to act as like an infinite sustainer. So I got a dumb idea. I got a guitar that I love. Uh, it's uh, like a Korean uh, stage master, neck through body. Um, so I'm determined to make this work because I'm not going to hack this guitar up for no reason. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pickup right here and I'm going to wire it to the input on this Honeytone amp. And then I'm going to take the output of this Honeytone amp and I'm going to use that output to drive the windings that I'm going to add to this pickup right here where I'm going to be putting uh, the copper windings on. And then what I will do is I'm going to take away the tone control and the selector switch and I'm going to have the bridge pickup go straight to a volume pot straight to the output jack. And then in the back of this guitar in the control cavity, I'm going to drop this board inside of here and I am going to then take a strat pick guard, put that bad boy right there and I'm going to move the volume, the tone and the distortion like overdrive controls for that honey tone amp onto this guitar right in this area after routing the guitar out. I'm going to use 42 gauge wire. Uh, I'm going to do all this for less than 50 bucks, I think. I don't know, maybe $100 after it's all said and done with, which is way better than spending $1,000 on a Sustainiac. So again, I'm going to cut this thing up. It's going to work. I'm going to make sure it works because I don't want to cut this thing up for no damn reason. Alright, so I unwound the voice coil, and to my surprise, there was only like seven feet of wire around the voice coil of the speaker. So, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to put the same amount of windings, not the same amount of windings, I'm trying to have the same resistance across, like along the windings in this pickup as I have in the speaker. Because if the resistance is too low on this guy which is going to be driven by this amp, it's going to get too hot. And if the resistance is too high on the windings around this pickup driven by this amp right here, if it were a speaker, it wouldn't like make enough volume. So does the volume of the speaker transpose into the amount of power that's going to come out of this pickup after we wind it up? I, I, I don't know. Um, but I'm going to try and get 8 ohms of winding around the, this pickup 
using this 42 gauge wire right here. Uh, and the reason why is because this is an 8 ohm speaker. I got super lucky. So after unwinding it, I got about... Focus. Focus. It measures about 4 thou in diameter. And the diameter of that 42 gauge wire is actually like two thousandths, seven tenths, you know, almost three thousandths of an inch. So there's a little bit of extra, you know, measured size because of the enamel coating. So awesome. I got the same diameter wire. I, and I only bought that because that was cheap, but I got the same diameter wire. Uh, so my amount of windings I need to put around this pickup is going to be about seven feet. Uh, <laughs> Let's find out if that's 8 ohms. Alright, you're going to drill a couple holes in the pickup, and you're going to put a couple notches in the pickup with a file next to the holes. And what we're going to do is you're going to wind this pickup like any other single coil would be wound. You're going to start the winding on one of those holes and notches, wrap it around a bunch of times, and then you're going to end the windings on another hole with the notch next to it. Uh, I tried soldering this insulated lead onto the end of the enameled wire and then winding everything and there was too much, there was too much strain on, on this solder joint and I kept breaking the insulated lead from the enameled wire. So don't bother trying to do it that way. It's going to try your patience uh this is probably the best way to go about this if you're going to use 42 gauge wire like i did all right there's the finished semi-finished pickup or whatever voice coil i'm going to attach it to the backing plate and the pickup assembly just like you see here so the screw provides a little bit of strain relief and you can kind of see how i attach those wires the, the insulated leads to the enameled wire in those loops or wrappings that I made between the notch and the hole. Ten ohms, close enough. All right, it's all back together again without the magnet. There's the the pickup we wound to eight ohms DC resistance. And we're gonna pop this thing. Uh, it should be potted. I probably don't need to do this, but if I can. Why wouldn't I? Alright, so my cat wants to know what's going on here. So, I'm going to put a screenshot of DB meter up there. I have uh, the guitar all strung up. I got that pickup we turned into a voice coil there. And I got... Uh, I don't know how to say it. I got everything all, like, taped onto the guitar to kind of like try and see if this thing works before I start cutting up the guitar, right? Okay, so... This is overdrive. This is tone. And I got my volume all the way up on max. Um... About seven-eighths of the range of the max volume doesn't give any of that, you know, uh, like 2 to 5k feedback. When I turn the, like, tone up, it takes away some of the range of the volume. Turn the tone back down. When I turn the overdrive up, that takes up even more range of the volume. So if I turn the overdrive all the way down, the tone all the way down, 
and the volume almost all the way up. Uh, it seems to work. Forgive all the camera shaking and all the other bullcrap. Uh, this is one of those tri storms where it is what it is. I don't notice any better sustain. I'm going to raise the pickup closer to the strings now and see if that does anything. Put the phone down for a second. So, the guitar is not in tune. That's not what this is about. <laughs> um, like, harmonics kind of die out quick, but part of them still remains. Like, that's a fifth fret harmonic on the B string. Kind of sort of doing something. I'm raising the pickup right now closer to the strings. I'm going to go back to that fifth fret and the B string. Can, has an easier time. Ah, this is not working. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking to myself if I put a low pass filter to get rid of some of the distortion and the and that feedback that we hear, like around 5k, 3k, uh, this might work differently. But I don't know what the hell turning the distortion or the tone up is gonna do. It's supposed to excite the string the same way it senses the string. So adding distortion to the output of this Honeytone amp that's driving that, you know, pickup backslash voice coil, that's not going to match the sounds that it's hearing, which, you know, are not overdriven. So I got the tone all the way down. I got the volume almost maxed out. And... Uh, <laughs> I don't really think it's doing anything, so we're not going to waste our time any longer. Alright, I got a piece of steel. I have the bar magnet from the humbucker on the back of the piece of steel. I have the two leads attached to the enameled copper. I got eight ohms wound the wound the very excuse me, wound around the very, like, end of this piece of, like, I don't know what that is, eighth of an inch piece of steel, and dig it! Success! Alright, so... Don't... Don't waste your time with this. It didn't work using this amplifier. Uh... If I take the magnet away...
I don't get the same effect. draw a schematic nice and clear so you guys can see what I did but basically this is the input jack on the honey tone amp and it goes to these two white wires and then these two white wires one of them is grounded out on the the volume pot where all the other grounds go and then I got the other lead going to the position on the five-way switch that has my bridge pickup selected so when I originally tried this I tried using the middle pickup the middle pickup didn't work I think it was just too close to uh, this driving pickup that we wound and it made all sorts of oscillating feedback noise now with that being said I wound another version of this pickup right here that was wound the 28 ohms and I noticed that the oscillating feedback went from like I don't know like 2 to 5k Hertz to like all the way to like like really high like 20 or 30 thousand Hertz and you almost couldn't hear it uh, anyways uh, and then yeah this is like, you know, this is the magnet on the back of a, a, a piece of steel. I think that in order for this thing to work properly, the the amount of, like, the windings have to be, like, really close to each other, tightly. Uh, and I think the poles on a normal single coil pickup are a little too big in diameter to make that happen. That's what I was reading on the internet. And then again, those two wires just go to the speaker output on this Honey Tone amp. Um, so I'm going to bury all this inside of uh, a, a different and better package so it doesn't look like total crap. But there you go, proof of concept right there. Alright, so this is kind of like a schematic of what I did. Uh, this is the Honey Tone amplifier the speaker outputs on the honey tone amplifier go to your neck pickup the driving pickup and what's important here is we need the magnet uh i wound that blade type pickup or that driver that you saw previously to eight ohms and I, i'm trying again i'm trying to match the speaker impedance uh, and then also like the configuration of the pickup is important. Uh, the, the normal signal coil that I originally tried using the pole pieces were too big in diameter. And I think that made the, the windings, you know, too large. And I was reading on the internet that, you know, that wouldn't, that doesn't work as well as maybe using like a blade style pickup would work. So when I, when I do all this nice and neat inside of the guitar, I'll actually like remake this driver pickup using a blade style, uh, pickup. Um, anyways, uh, so the input of the honey tone amp, uh, part of it's going to go to the same position on your five way or your three way selector switch that your bridge pickup is getting power from. And then it, you know the other the other lead going into the input of the honey tone amp is going to go to the ground preferably the same ground as everything else inside of your guitar's control cavity goes to that way you don't have any ground loops and you get weird noises and stuff like that um but yeah that's it 